guess I never thought we'd be hunted down like common criminals, but that's just what was happening. Faked a rescue at the Aeronautical Research Station, using our name and uniforms in order to steal the plans of the AL-4 Space Interceptor Missile, which could change the whole balance of power in the world if it ever got into the wrong hands. But now, we were in a whole heap of trouble. World security was scouring every corner of the globe to find our headquarters. Of course, I knew our cover-up would stand any scrutiny. But what if our help should be needed during the search? We just couldn't blast off and take a chance that our position would be plotted. All we could do for now was keep our fingers crossed and follow the search progress on the video. And this is your world television reporter, Eddie Kerr, bringing you the latest in the search for the traitorous international rescue gang of crooks. Traitorous crooks. How do you like that? I heard, Virgil. We filmed an interview today with General Lambert, Supreme Commander of the search operation. And, well, let's take a look at it. We know what's going on without having to listen to that. What are their chances of finding us, Mr. Tracy? They won't find us, Tim Tim. We're too well hidden for that. They'll search the island, of course, but people have been here before. That's no problem. Well, what are we going to do, Dad? Only one thing we can do, Scott. Find those guys, those imposters who stole the plans. Meanwhile, we daren't operate as international rescue until this whole business is cleared up. But where do we start, Father? We haven't a thing to go on. Well, this is where our agents come in. As you know, international rescue have got agents all over the world. This map shows the network and the territories covered by each individual. All agents will be alerted. Every piece of information, however unimportant it is, to be radioed in. Lady Penelope will leave for the States in order to question eyewitnesses in case they can throw some light on the situation. We'll find them, boys. We've got to. Will passengers in the first-class wing compartment please fasten their safety belts? Oh, well, uh, very nice. I must say, the lady. I, I always think myself it's the best way to travel. First class. It's worth that bit extra. Oh, my you. The service isn't quite what I would expect, but uh, these young fellas don't have the training that I had. Quite, Parker. Quite. your pardon me? Oh, nothing particular, Parker. I just hope that one of our agents somewhere will find something. Penelope was to get her wish sooner than she expected. And somewhere in the hills of Tennessee, Agent 47 was out hunting. Yes, Reckon that will do for supper. Strange. Mighty strange. Hi there, Mo. Huh? I reckon I'm a mighty late, but I uh, had to get up to the old mine on account of some business. Isn't it? What business? Well, now, Mo, thanks for me to see. Kind of between me and that star, Mr. Tracy. What you see? Can't be said. But those are where to report anything to my sisters. And that's sure what it was. Suspicious. <laughs> this is Agent 47 calling International Rescue Base. Go ahead, Agent 47. 47's call came through at the same time as a world security patrol called to search the island. Alan took it in the emergency control room. They gone, Father? 
They have for now, but my guess is they'll be back. Messages still coming in, Alan? Yeah. This one's from Agent 47. Sounded sort of hillbilly. 47. Oh, 47. Oh, Jeremiah. Yeah, he's a hillbilly, all right. Who the heck's that? <laughs> oh, he's quite a character. What's he got to say, anyway? Aircraft tire tracks. Hmm. Open country. Could be an aircraft made a forced landing there. Not much to go on. Pilot, son, no action. What's on your mind, Mo? Well, I was just wondering if there's anything out of that old mine. Yep. So wondering the same thing was ill. Sure enough, deep in the workings of the old mine, two of the crooks were gloating over their achievement while a third member was away bringing back a buyer for the stolen plans. Hey, this is the best hideout I ever had, Jenkins. Yeah, and the best deal. We make a fortune. An international rescue take the rap. Yeah, kind of tough on those guys, though. Yeah, I'm eating my heart out. <laughs> watching for us in the whole Pacific area has closed down for four hours. Thanks, John. It doesn't make much difference. If we did manage to take off without being discovered, they'd track us on the return trip. Yeah, I guess so. Just thought I'd let you know. Sure. Oh, well, keep listening in. You may hear something to help us. Okay. How's it going down there, anyway? We're plowing through the agent's reports, hoping for a lead. I wish you luck. Oh, at least we're not the only ones with troubles. What do you mean they'll be off the air for four hours? That was the message, sir. Tracking device DKO has broken down. Well, don't just stand there. Get them on the radio. I'll talk to them. Okay, that's it. I'll start with the antennae. Work right back through the system. Yeah, I'll do the same from this end. SO3 from search control. SO3 from search control. Come in, please. This is Space Observatory 3. Go ahead, search control. General Lambert for you. Lambert here. Now, listen to me. I want that space station of yours fully operational in the shortest possible time. If not sooner. Is that clear? Yes, sir. We're just about to start, sir. I'm going to send Elliot out through the airlock. Then get to it, man. Get to it. Call me back when you've fixed it. Right. Let's get started. <laughs> as he stepped through that airlock in his pressurized suit, that there was a fault in his thruster pack, his only means of propulsion in space. A fault that was to set Father his biggest problem yet. Use your tie ropes and double check them, too. fine. You don't want you drifting off into space. Call me if you want me. I gotta make a start in here. And after the rescue operation, the imposters made off in their aircraft in a south-southwesterly direction. Probably a blind. Although they wouldn't want to go too far out of their way. I checked the weather reports for that day. North and east are out. Uh, what sort of a jet was that again? 
Well, Eddie Kerr wasn't too fat. Probably an EJ, too. Hmm. Well, that's not a long range job. A thousand miles at the most. So the imposters couldn't have had far to go to their base. There's not much to go on, but it suggests we'd be best to concentrate our attention on this area. Well, which agent covers that area, Father? 47. 47? Hey, Alan, didn't we have something from Jeremiah Tuttle? Yes, Father, we did. He reported seeing some aircraft tracks, remember? Yes, I do. Right, Penny, tell Parker to stand by with the rolls. I've got another mission for you. Right, Jeff. <laughs> Go right ahead, Mr. Tracy, sir. That report of yours, Jeremiah, about the undercar tracks. Looks like there might be something in it. I'm sending our London agent to see you. Now, that's right doggone decent of you, Mr. Tracy. Don't have many visitors around these parts. Her name is Lady Penelope. I want you to meet her and give her all the help you can. She's going to investigate those tracks. Tain't trouble, is it, Jeremiah? Reckon it might be just that, Mo. I've had to strip it right down, Elliot. It's still around two hours' work. Uh, stand by the airlock. Sure. Making one final check before re-entering the capsule, he unclipped the tie ropes and prepared to use his thruster pack. He could do nothing. It wouldn't switch off. He shot off into space like a rocket over and over until the jets were exhausted. There was nothing I could do, General. Elliot just shot up into space like a rocket. His suit will protect him from the radiation, but allowing for the time he spent working outside, I guess he's only got about three hours of oxygen left. Well, there's no chance of you getting him back with the retro pack? None. He moved too fast for me to get a direction. The only chance he has is if you can get a rocket launched. Listen, Hale, you know as well as I do just how long it would take to get a ship to your sector? Yes, sir. It's ironic, but only international rescue would have been... International rescue? Suppose we just try and remember what this operation is all about, huh? Yes, sir. How long before you can get that satellite on tracking duty? An hour, sir. Then I suggest you get working. Elliot gave his life for the success of this detail. And I'm going to make sure it wasn't in vain. Message received. Thanks, John. But he's got just three hours up there. We've got to do something, Father. Alan, what can we do? Unless Penelope comes up with something, we can't make a move. Right. Then that's our plan of action. Kind of figured that as I know this part of the country, you'd let me handle it, Lady Penelope. I'm sorry, Jeremiah, but I want this one all to myself. Come on, Parker. Meanwhile, 
Somewhere in the emptiness of space, Elliot was trying without success to contact his partner. Boys, Alan, Scott, we're going after him. The search is still on, Dad. I'm well aware of that. But it's just feasible that Penelope will clear us in time. If not, we'll take everything as it comes. The thing that matters is that we're the only ones with any hope of saving that guy in space. Alan, take Scott with you. Sure. We've left it late, but do your best to save him. Okay, away you go. <laughs> I guess we knew all along what the decision would be when it came. But all the same, it was like a huge weight being lifted from us. Even though the outcome of this rescue could mean the end of Father's lifelong dream. And all the hard work that we had all put into the organization. I joined Alan on the couch in the lounge. And immediately it sank through the floor, taking us on our way to the Thunderbird Tree silo. In a matter of seconds, we were underneath the towering form of our interspace communications vehicle. And then we were being injected upwards through the boarding hatch into the flight control deck. While Alan settled into his takeoff couch, where he quickly went through the pre-launch procedure to ensure everything was A-OK -okay for the trip, I set about zeroing the radar tracking equipment, which was needed if we were to find that guy up there. It would be like finding the proverbial needle in a haystack with all those satellites and meteorites about, but that's the chance we would have to take. Then, with all checks completed and final clearance from control, Thunderbird 3 blasted off. Through the roundhouse and up into space. Sector 4 reports unidentified rocket launch. Did they get a bearing? No, sir. It didn't register till it was two miles up. I can't believe it's international rescue, but keep a close watch on it anyway. Yes, sir. We would have pinpointed that launch site if the satellite had been with us. You better switch on the tracking equipment. We're in the area. Try increasing the range. Well, I'll try. But if I extend it any more, we may pick up so many trails we won't know which is Elliot. There. Did you see something? Yeah. Try it on vision. There he is. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go and get him. Hey, a few more hours. And the plane should be back with the fire. That's it, Corella. And it'll take good American dollars to buy this little lot. They can keep their foreign money. Outside, Penny and Parker had arrived. Uh, this must be it, lady. We've got them cornered, all right. I'll fire a warning shot. Oh, no. Parker. Why did I ever come here? Why? Look at all this mud. It's everywhere. Someone out there. Get the rifles. It, it not so loud, the lady. If they hide in there, they'll hear you. Oh, Parker, why, why didn't I let those, those hillbillies do this? With her gun out of action, well, there was nothing they could do. Guess I'll shoot first and ask questions after. Yes, it's about time I took a hand, Mo. You'd better come on out of there and give yourselves up. Oh, Jeremiah. 
We thought someone was firing at us. If they got us hemmed in, Jenkins. Maybe they have, but we don't give up that easy. Come and get us, wise guy. Oh, dear. They're going to make a fight of it, Jeremiah. Yep, kind of looks that way. Pass me those cans of beans, will you, Mo? Beans? But this is no time to eat. Eat? I guess you ain't been around these parts long enough to heard about Mo's beans, man. Jeremiah then did the oddest thing. He tossed the two cans of beans that Ma Tuttle handed him into the mine shaft. Now. Okay, you win. <coughs> hey, let's get out of here. <laughs> well, this is where we say goodbye, Elliot. Yeah, I, I know I keep saying it, but you guys saved my life. Thanks. And, well, it's... It's just great that you guys have been clear. You can say that again. to hear yet another exciting international rescue adventure. One that by a strange coincidence also involved Parker and myself, but not in our official capacity as international rescue agents. The scene is set in London, the Bank of England to be precise. Lord Silton, the governor and an old acquaintance, had secured our advice on having a new ultra-modern vault installed at the bank. Now, Parker, who, as you all probably know, has done, uh, well, I mean, spent a lot of time on the subject of safes and alarm systems, was an immense help. Let us take up the story at the Bank of England soon after the vault had been installed. Lovegrove. I've uh, put the Brinkley report figures on your desk, sir. What, already? Uh, Lambert was working on them, sir. His concentration is quite terrifying. Lambert, eh? Oh, yes, I know the fellow. Chappy who absolutely buries himself in his work. Gets through ten times as much as anybody else. Yes. Could do with a few more like him. Oh, indeed one could, sir, yes. Fantastic, isn't it, Lovegrove? Here we are, standing inside the Bank of England. Outside, it appears just as about two, three, four centuries ago. And yet down here, we have the strongest, most modern vault in the entire world. Oh, quite fantastic, Your Lordship. Indeed so, sir. One does, of course, deplore change. Oh, of course one does, sir. But it is nevertheless comforting to know that all England's deeds, monies and documents are safely under lock and key. Most comforting indeed, sir. Especially when one considers that I have the only electronic key and that I carry it with me wherever I go. Any more to come, Lovegrove? I'm dining at a stately home tonight. Don't want to be late, you know. I think they're all here, sir. Call the roll, then, eh? There's a good chap. At once, Your Lordship. Taylor? Present, Mr. Lovegrove. Carter? Yes, sir. Moore? Moore? Mm, yes, yes, here. Longman? Present, sir. Lambert? Lambert? He did leave the vault earlier, Mr. Lovegrove. I see. Very well. Barrett? Yes, sir. All present and accounted for, sir. Good. Good. Now all that remains is to close the vault. Lovegrove. We can rest assured that nobody will ever break into here. Quite, sir. Quite. 
It's a great engineering achievement. I especially approve of the way the air is pumped out of the vault. Papers keep so much better in a vacuum. Well, that appears to be it. You do, of course, have the key, huh? It's in my case, Lovegrove. And this case never leaves my side. As the huge doors closed and the automatic pumps began to suck the air from the vault, Lord Stilton left the bank on his way to join me for dinner. But soon after he left, it was discovered that Lambert, one of the clerks, was missing. He had, in fact, returned to the vault and was deeply engrossed in his work. A search was immediately organized. Well, we've checked everywhere else, and Lambert's still missing. Perhaps he is locked in the world. Mm, I gave orders I was not to be disturbed. These figures must be finished. Hello. 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 Uh, perhaps I will get some peace and quiet now. He's in there, all right, but he's rung off. Lambert always did bury himself in his work. You'll get no Look sense. at the indicator. In another two hours, all the air will be pumped out. We can't stop it, and we can't open the vault. Well, here's to you, Lady Fidelity. Still can't thank you enough for all you did. Oh, it was nothing. And anyway, Parker must take most of the credit. A real pleasure, that man of yours. Wish I could find someone like him. Knows his place, dresses well. Sort of fellow you could take anywhere. Ain't you got my grub ready yet, Lil? What's the matter with you? I've only got one pair of hands, ain't I? Wasted your time here, girl. If you got more, <laughs> you'd make a few bob in a circus, wouldn't you? <laughs> What are you getting for their nibs, then? None of your business. Ah, uh, low, well, low. You want to keep your shirt no, on? Oh, Ark is talking. Still, don't blame you not telling me. If I cook like you, I wouldn't shout about it, neither. Now, listen here, Nosey. Hey, manners, manners. Mr. Parker, if you don't mind. All right, then, Mr. Nosy Parker. I've been slaving over this all day. Oh, come off it, Lou. I was only pulling your leg. What you done for them? Well, I'm starting them off with a drop of consum. Oh, audible load of old rubbish. Uh, then a special uh, Escalope receipt, with all the trimmings, of course. Muck, gives me heartburn just to look at it. And then they can finish off with their old crepey Suzettes and uh, coffee how they like it. Crepey? Cr yeah, well, they're welcome to it. Hey, what you got for me, then? Stew. Oh, me favourite. I saw you, don't I? Here you are, here's your paper. I know how you like a read while you're eating. Ah, oh, well... Cool. Strike me feet! Not think of Fred's art! You rang, madam? Yes. You may serve coffee now, Parker. Yes, milady. Would you like Parker to take your briefcase? No, thank you. It never leaves my side, you know. Everywhere I go. Good heavens. What's that noise? What is it? It's the emergency call system. I'm wanted at the bank immediately. Emergency? You mean the bank is being robbed? It could be. Beg your baby! Come be nincompoop! Parker! Uh, I'm sorry, milady. It's, uh, I don't know what came over me. It must be a sudden shock. I'll get something to clean up this mess. I'm terribly sorry, Lord Silton. No time for apologies. I must ring the bank immediately. Neither his lordship or I noticed the departure of Parker. 
who made his way down to the cellar and began tampering with some electric cables. Lord Stilton had, meanwhile, contacted the bank. Ah, Lovegrove. Now, what's all this emergency call about, eh? <coughs> We've been cut off. Parker. Yes, milady? Get the Rolls Royce out, Parker. We're taking Lord Stilton to London. Don't worry. We'll have you there in no time. My car is capable of phenomenal speeds. <laughs> It's a very smooth ride. It feels as though we're hardly moving. Parker. Can't understand why we're going so slow, madam. I have my foot on down. I don't know what you're up to, but get us to London quickly. <laughs> Meanwhile, somewhere in space, John Tracy was receiving an SOS. Go ahead, John. Emergency call from London, England. Requesting immediate action. Okay, John. I'll get you to brief Scott. If I be, I'll clear the air and remain on standby. Okay, Virgil, away you go. Pod 5. Alan will be joining you. Okay, Father. This was what the boys had been waiting for. After a week of rest, they were raring to go. As Virgil stood against the tall portrait on the wall, it hinged backwards, sliding him onto the chute, which carried him down to Thunderbird 2. Alan had already boarded the passenger elevator and was on his way down to the hangar. When all was ready, Thunderbird 2 took off. Destination England carrying with it pod five containing the mole and an assortment of cutting gear. Then Scott, after receiving a briefing from Thunderbird 5, made his way via the moving walkway to the flight deck of Thunderbird 1, and within moments was airborne. rescue from space station, Thunderbird 2 has landed safely. Scott reports that owing to the underground cables and communications in London, the mole cannot be used. If they can't tunnel their way in, they'll never rescue that poor man. The journey to London seemed to be taking ages, and Parker was so evasive when asked if anything was wrong. Lord Silton, too, kept anxiously studying his watch. Finally, we turned into a country lane which ran for miles, then abruptly ended. Well, that was the last straw. Well, I'm waiting for your explanation, Parker. Uh, I, I seem to have lost my way, milady. Lost your way to London? Yes, ma'am. Step outside, Parker. I want a word. Now, why are you so intent on stopping Lord Silton getting to the bank, Parker? Me? The light? Yes, you. I can see now that it was you who put the video phone out of action. Now, suppose you explain, hmm? Parker, I'm waiting. Oh, uh, well, uh, it's... Oh, all right, my lady. It who began the last time I was away. In prison, you mean? Uh, well, if you uh, were to put it that way, my lady. Uh, I shared a cell with a gentleman known to the trade as Light-Fingered Fred. Go on, Parker. Well, I was resting on my bunk one day 
when Fred said, Here, Nosey, what's the matter now? What are you going to do when you get out? Oh, I don't know. I, I haven't thought about it much. No, no, listen, listen. I think it's important. I mean, it's only right that a bloke should have ambition, I mean. Look, I don't want to waste these ten years I'm doing. You know, I, I'm going to learn from them, Nosey. Oh, planning for the future, are you, Fred? Yeah, that's right. That's it exactly. Learn from your mistakes. Look, I may not have been a friend of society up till now, but I'm going to reform and settle down. Just as soon as I knocked off the Bank of England. You... You... You robbed the Bank of England? Not off. Oh, you mark my words. I shall break into the vault, and I personally will do the Bank of England. So you, you see, ma'am, this emergency could be light-figured Fred carrying out his threat. Not necessarily. But it could be. It isn't right, the lady, that I should be the one to ruin an old colleague's life ambition. Well, we haven't time to argue, Nosey, uh, Parker. But if you feel like this, I shall drive us to London. <laughs> Fruit in a tree, madam. Ma madam, it, 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 it is a tree. There's a tree to me. We certainly moved quicker than when Parker was driving. And I was enjoying myself immensely. I just couldn't understand Lord Silton and Parker's worried looks whenever we approached him. can't cut through the door. Well, not in the available time. We've, uh, we've just got to come up from below. Any suggestions, Brains? Well, uh, I, not at this uh, moment, Mr. Tracy. There must be an answer somewhere. And I think I know what it is. You, Grandma? You want to come out the ground, but you can't use the mold. That the problem? You got it. Well, it seems I remember when I was a little girl, my grandma talking about the old London subway trains under the ground. New York had them as well. Of course, that was before this new fangled overhead monorail system. Hey, you may have something there. Scott, check and see if those subway tunnels are still in existence. Luckily, they were still there, but now they were very derelict. Then, Virgil and Alan, mounted on hover bikes, made their way underground. Look, Alan. Piccadilly Circus. Yeah, sure is a change from being up in space. Come on, this way. Ten minutes. That's all there's left. Any news of the guy who's got the key? <laughs> when it made him shoot, cats. We made it, the Bank of England. Let's find the elevator shaft. Oh, I can hardly breathe. I must get, I must get out. I must get out. Let's get to work. Must try and get help. Uh, 
Lambert was pretty desperate now. He could hardly breathe, and the slightest movement left him gasping for air. He had no way of knowing that Virgil and Alan were within a few feet of him, feverishly drilling in preparation for an explosive charge to blast the wall down. It was about then that we finally arrived at the back. <laughs> Drive. I must do this more often, Parker. We'll be through any time. Given up hope. Lambert is trapped in the vault. There's just seconds left. Quickly, sir. The electronic key. The key? Yes, sir. The one you always have with you in your briefcase. The, the briefcase? It never leaves your side. Remember. Oh, oh, uh, oh, that briefcase. <laughs> I um I um, must have left it at Lady Penelope's. <laughs> one of your hair clips, the lady. If you would be so kind. Parker, this is no time for flippancy. Couldn't be more serious, lady. They haven't built a safe yet that nosy Parker can't open. The last seconds were ticking away as Lambert reached the bell. <laughs> We're through. Who, who are you? You okay? Guess we just made it. We're international rescue. International rescue? Well, I, 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 I knew you were highly efficient, but... This is ridiculous. As he spoke, the vault doors began to open. I'm, I'm afraid I've ruined your airpin, my lady. Parker, you're an old rascal. Yes, my lady. Did you see that, Lovegrove? The Bank of England vault opened with a hairpin. Outrageous. Oh, indeed, sir. Outrageous. <laughs> Well, there you have it. Poor Mr. Lambert is safe and none the worse for his ordeal. Light-fingered Fred is back behind bars. Lord Stilton is looking for a stronger vault for the bank. And I'm saving up to pay for all the damage I did to the Rolls Royce on that frantic drive. And Parker has threatened to leave my service if I ever scare him again like that. Well, be with you all again soon. Over and out.